hi guys welcome to the first show of real talks with pinks i'm really excited uh, this is our first show and i have a special guest today who is kicking us off on a high note we decided to bring an author elisu to author medino matlakala and talo she wrote a beautiful book called tales of a barren woman by Leah Dinyoba. and i would say you must go out there and get the book it retails for 150, yeah, 150. if i'm not mistaken so medino thank you so much for coming to the show today we will be discussing the two topics that you are discussing in here which is infertility and also miscarriages so can you please just introduce yourself to our viewers Kimang medino harabuaga medino matlakalans hello Okay, thank you for having me. Um, Gabu Kutanifel, I can say, Dineo Matagala Ntalong is a women's rights activist and now an author, so. <laughs> this is really exciting. I was so excited when I saw your book. <laughs> You're officially an author. I am. Yeah, am. so we will be talking about the book, but going deeper into this topic that you talk about in the book, because I think it's a really important topic that we generally don't discuss in our society. So the first question I'm going to ask you is, what prompted you to write a book and why this title? It's actually a funny story, not mm -hmm. funny haha, but at the end of the day, it's a funny story. Because I was walking out of some shady place, in my hand, and some dark concoction I was supposed to drink, and certain things I'm supposed to bark with. And I didn't understand how I got there. So I just stood there and like, oh my god, how did I even get here? Hey, So that's what I said. <laughs> the ritual, ritual saying, hey, Motuka, I said, I'm going to buy a book. So that's where the idea actually came from. I was like, okay, let me actually do write this book. Mm. Time goes by, I read a few chapters and then I neglect the, the idea. And then I went to Mandela, Washington, and I came back, was full of life. I was like, okay, um, I advocate for the decriminalization of abortion in the sort of mm -hmm. They get like in LA, new strategies, new plans, this new network. I wanted to do this. It is very serious. And he, shortly after I came back home, I got pregnant. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even know that I was pregnant at the time. So Ibehek, when I did realize that I was pregnant, Nikili back at the point where I was planning to continue with the book, mm -hmm. I was already increasing more things because I'm curious that energy, MFW, yes, like, yes, 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 they're just there, <laughs> they're just there, mm -hmm. and then that was the most dramatic experience of all my miscarriages and everything. I thought it was the most dramatic one because before I could enjoy being pregnant. I was already in hospital. I was having an ectopic pregnancy. I was scheduled for surgery. And chances of me ever falling pregnant again were just dying right there and then. Oh my God. And at the same time, I was so fearful that I might just follow. Hmm. It, so... it was a scary thing. So when I was in hospital, like, how come I like the prologue? That was a very, very angry prayer I made. Mm. So that was when I was like, okay, oh God, I know I said I wanted to write this book. Were you just trying to give me new content? Oh, mm. What was this all about? I don't know how to be God, but like, this is not on. Mm. So that even propelled me to write the book more. So besides that, I was tired of being asked, but I'm okay. Mm. By the way, the function, whole day, guy. And then I gained a lot of weight. I used to be a size 28, and then Jiggy Jiggy says 36. So mm. everyone is like, Wabana, this is what children do to you. And I'm like, uh, what? what Let me get this it? right. Corey, let me stop you there and say, Corey, how long had you been married when you fell pregnant? Oh, the first time around, I had been married for two years. Okay. It was already the first uh, miscarriage was in 2016. I'd been married for two years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it led to that two years, Elore, I was already fed up. Mm. Hey, when I like people from my side of my family would be like, Oh, and it's like a pay. They give them a kid before they start calling you names. Mm. And then whenever we went to family functions, okay, so where are the kids? Mm. When are we giving us a grandchild? Mm. You know, those subtle hints here and there. That's how it all started. I was already fed up with everything. I just needed to have a kid and get it over and done with. Mm. And then at that time, I didn't really understand what was going on. I know that I just started, I started bleeding heavily and... 
it's a painful experience. I can imagine. It is a very painful experience. You have no idea what's happening. And then the second one, you'd think it wouldn't be as dramatic, but then it hits you. It's just as hard, mm. if not harder. And then the third, and then the fourth, like, okay, no, I, I need to write a book. Mm. I definitely need to write a book, uh, to write a book about this. Ish. Kuri, when I read your book, in the book, there's somewhere... Mubuanga hori Christmas ni seli na kusa irati jumu na yawe na kuingia Christmas ria hai ika ba he nuka po habu muna hau kuru huna le ba chuo tibi nzima bota he la utanga fadi tuloni kura gaza society ni yako na huna lintu ni yahore he la wetangwa na nindi ne wetangwa na nimpingi and I think for some of us a lot of us utla ukwa hutu oh hagi mo kwa na ba hude halipa tuwe taba na so kuri kiri kimata hore na for you and so many other women who are experiencing such how does it feel being asked by family and friends over and over hore hanta ukwa fanga na ning utseba ukwa vile di experience it 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 ukwa through the miscarriage kapa you didn't carry to term kuri kiki kintejo mto a atla resonate if ukila ba le a similar experience. It's it's like a declaration of war, or some for me personally because I retaliate very quickly. Mm. So I'll be humble the first two times, and then the next thing you ask me, "Ha, ewe na? We heard you have you have been going up and down in this world. Do I know what I should tell you? Okay, for my nanny, I should, I should, mm. I give you hell. And now it's becoming but, your mm, defense mechanism exactly. because you feel like you have to we do an end. I've become so petty. It's hard to believe that I've become so petty. And that's so this one adult woman was asking me. Um, she's my old teacher. She, mm-hmm. she asked. I well, now I heard you had gone somewhere. Hey, hey, hey. What was going on over there? I was trying to explain to her what I was doing there, representing women. Yes, yes. It's like yeah, 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 yeah. How to how to I was like, oh my god, really? But now about to say how to how to how to I'm not naturally that kind of a person, mm, okay. but I become so defensive. But for some people, it differs. Gaga individual, gaga or gaga individual about one again. Some people, they just get crushed. Mm. So now I choose not to be crushed. So mm. my defense mechanism is just to retaliate mm. and be nasty. But mm. I'm working on it because sometimes people, in as much as they're being hateful, some don't even know that they're being hateful. Mm. Some are intentionally. Mm. And I think most people are unaware. Mm. What do they mean? Well, they'll be asking. Ah, I say the bio- biological clock is ticking. We mm. understand you're following your passions, mm. but are you aware of certain things? Because mm. as women, uh, some of the experiences that we go through is that because honali na ko elong ho rejoale na ko isetsa maile you are thinking how sa tlo ba bube ba le ngwana some people will be saying it but are you aware ho so tlo ba thata at a certain age but jole ba sa tsebe experience ya how because na ko ngwa ke you don't have for we man e facebook but we are so happy that you wrote the book because now other people will know so is this the story of many other women because ha ke bala there are about three characters if i'm not mistaken So are the three characters representing people who are also telling a similar story as yours? Okay, so um, this is a story of me and two of my friends. Oh, okay. But her uh, her role in two different women that appear in the book. Some of the stories that the role log goes through are mine, but some of her experiences are someone else. Ooh. Because <laughs> in as much as, <laughs> as I was ready to just drop and up, it's not cool for some people to find out the impact they had like that. So I was like, okay, let me educate them first. Okay. And if I still don't see a difference, I'll just write my story, just me only. And then you can get to learn more. And I, that day you said this, I didn't like it. Ish. So I, I just didn't want, and I, I needed this to be educational. Mm-hmm. So I felt like if I wrote it solely about just me, it would be an attack to some people. Yes. Who yes. may or may not have realized the impact of their actions. So I said, okay, let, let's start off easy. Let's educate. <laughs> Someone should read a certain part and like, oh, okay, oh, baby, shall I look at that was me? I really shouldn't have. I really shouldn't have done or said that. So yeah. So in a nutshell, you wrote the book to educate people about infertility yes. and the issue that some people have um, uh, miscarriages. They're still trying to have babies. Mm-hmm. So Kori, when what would you like to say to people who may sometimes mean well and be asking about uh, uh, such a topic? Mm-hmm. Kori, what are the nice things to say to people? Because sometimes you say those cruel things mm-hmm. unaware, mm-hmm. unaware. Because somewhere in the book you talk about 
uh, people are referring you, referring you to church. Mm. And I could identify that as a Christian. Mm. As a Christian, I could identify as a prophet, 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 as And we genuinely sometimes mean well. We mm. are genuinely a prophet, as a prophet, as a prophet, as a prophet, and you've literally tried everything mm, mm. and uh, all of them had your and now they keep prompting you to try and try how does that feel mm. that thing you go there go there mm-hmm. let me just first start off guy the people who mean well because at the last chapter i classify it all for yes me. yeah this ones who hurt you and are whether they're really hurting you give an body recommendations you know i know a sister's friend who went to a certain that then don't mm. and the this and now she has seven kids i'm mm. pretty sure they mean well lena ka kelonya high honestly she believes that mm. so to them like before you can suggest that kind of thing would you please find out horena the person you're talking to in what space of mind are they in find out how they mm. are doing what they want mm. first it's about them before it's about the kid or any other thing. So let's. I I sometimes just tell my friends because I'm saying whatever you're going to say, it's going to be too cautious or too loose. You don't know how to address me. Mm. So let's just let's <laughs> ease into it. Just you can sit here by my bedside and just tell me about sleepy sleeping and make me laugh. Mm. Don't make it about my pregnancy. The fact that you're here mm. means that I know I, I know that you care. Mm. So skabu. Let's be sensitive enough to know mm. how na umuding of it because na kung how about all the time to be oh how are you feeling because yeah, pity party nya na so sometimes you but I feel like hey like kila kashere la in to just mm. ease your mind of because but mm. but about what but what I'm bare it becomes better the more I keep talking about it la but what I'm afraid even mm. mungi file they mm. just wanna cry hard that the whole o o o o she ban to tell you I'm one of those mm, okay, okay I'm done okay now let's move on let's move mm, on but to about one yeah but to about one so just you need to learn the type of person that you're mm. talking about because they tell us when you lay on a train like that it gets like you're like a special case and then you stop being normal because at the end of the day if you're tall or if you're tall this or that you are still a whole person yes mm. there's somewhere more buang let's get to that part where you are talking to women who can have kids women who can carry to term mm. at the end of the day unzole mm. mosadi talk to those women now because there's a there's a there's a, a nice ending mm. where you say you might have been struggling for years mm. and now you don't want to try again which is totally fine mm. and no one should be forcing mm. you to do that talk to those women who have tried everything but now they are ready to say this is my story i'm a whole person mm. i cannot have kids and it's fine Okay what I would say is find out cuz I know get a friends with the guy in college is we need to be up there go hagan to tshe tse leng hore when you dealing with life life cover insurances visits to the guy must be on the top five things every woman okay. should have a mm-hmm. know about your body know what's happening even before you commit into someone's life have a pep so that me. Mm, have a pep smear every year be just mm. hey mm. so please know about your body understand your body fully mm-hmm. and then know that whether or not you can have a kid whether or not you want to have a kid you're still a, you're still as awesome as ever mm-hmm. you're still a whole person and you matter and no one should tell you otherwise mm-hmm. and if you feel like man i know what i'm saying you can keep walking The last part that I did not ask you about mm. how are you walking the journey with your partner throughout uh, the miscarriages telling your story mm. uh, how has he been supporting you because sometimes we neglect but we don't that but it's important to work the journey to walk the journey level now because we are now affected mm. Okay so for him I feel like he was going through the worst I thought I was going through a lot of pain because everything was happening to me physically. But mm-hmm. For him, he had to be strong for himself and for me. And for you. Yeah. But in total, my God, I he stopped trying a very long time. Kina nanza push because I felt like I owed it to him. And whenever he should support, I would feel annoyed. Like no, no, Like let me do this for you. Let me just give you this kid. Let me try it one last time. And he was not even about that. He was. Just telling me like stop please like I don't even want kids but not by expensive can we just like can you call it I love you as you are but when you're in that position 
sometimes you are so insecure you don't even understand you feel like he's just doing me a favor but i learned the hard way after i had actually asked him to say okay i love can you please like i thought i wouldn't mind even if you had an affair had a kid you know i wouldn't mind but i actually would mind and he walked out so but he has been the best person ever he's been so supportive and he's been holding my hand the entire time it's been the best thing ever that's amazing that is so amazing because mm -hmm. and i think it's good that uh, I think that's where we are so wrong as women. How much it's too alone, and it's so nice when you have a supportive partner to walk this journey with you. Mm. And I do pray, Hore, but who are going through a similar experience have partners who are holding their hands and walking this journey with them. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I'm so happy that you were able to help so many other women. So can you tell them? Okay, so I'm still working on my so it be a bit more distributors, but right now you can still only get it who Takani Retabili Shal Elinda Publisher. Okay. From lipstick and scars. I will share her contacts on Facebook. Okay, I think we'll also share the Mona on the video down there. But we're going to have a cafe man and book a guy. Thank you so much. Kitabe so we share stories and share things in taboo for so many times in our society, and I'm so happy we're going to have a sit down local about what we're at. But it's about about to get about to stories about. Thank you so much. Thank you for to everyone who's watching the show. See you in our next episode. Thank you. Thank you.